So far, we've been using examples using an automatic legend. I mentioned earlier that we would come back to the concept of a predefined legend. Let's clear this map and go over this concept in a little bit more detail. In this example, we'll apply a predefined legend set to our map. How to create these predefined legends will be discussed in other academies. But for now, we are going to show you how to use the predefined legends that are available. If you remember, we used a predefined legend in our pivot table example previously to highlight different colors on the pivot table. The same concept applies to the map. I'm just going to remove the background layer quickly. And then I'm going to add in a thematic layer. We go to thematic layer one and then edit layer. This is following the same steps as previously. We'll work with an indicator this time, and we'll work with the immunization coverage indicator. Let's select BCG coverage. This is one of the indicators we worked with previously in that pivot table example. We can select yearly as our period type, and let's look at data from 2015. After we selected our data and periods, we select our organization units. In this case, I'm going to look at this data by district. I will deselect region and then select district as the organization unit level. For my options, now I want to change the legend type from automatic to predefined. I will click on the drop down and change the legend type to predefined. We then have another prompt in which we can select the legend set. I will work with the EPI coverage, which is the one we used previously in the pivot table example. I'm going to leave everything else as its default values. Now we can update the map. We can see now that a customized legend set has been applied to this particular indicator. Remember, how to create these legends will be discussed in other academies but it's possible to create and define your own legend types within DHIS2 and apply them to your data.